makeup friends and welcome back to the channel or if you're new here then hello and welcome my name is Kara and today we're going to be taking a look at 10 new makeup releases now in the past several months ago I used to do these videos on a fairly regular basis and how I would approach them would be to rank them in terms of what I was the least interested in working up to what I'm the most interested in and that's how we're going to do it again today I haven't done one of these in a long time and I thought, why the hell not? So here we are, that's what we're gonna do. Before we jump into it, I will talk about my makeup very, very briefly. On my lips, I have one of the lipsticks from Urban Decay in the shade Oat Milk. On my cheeks, I'm trying out a new blush. This one is from the brand Culfi, and it is in the shade Lucky Lotus. It's a cream blush, and a little goes a very long way. It is very pigmented. And then on my eyes, one of you lovely, lovely people sent me this palette amongst some other goodies as well, but this is the Cutie Palette from Nabla in the shade Midnight. So that is what I've got going on up here. Now, I have to admit that I've not really been keeping my finger on the pulse of all things new releases, at least not on a very regular basis. I am trying to curb my makeup spending and I find this is one of those situations where ignorance is bliss. If I don't know that something is available, I am not tempted to buy it. Nonetheless, I did go through the Trend Mood Instagram account today as well as the new makeup release radar. Is that what it's called? I will link them in the description box because once there's more than two words to connect, I have a hard time remembering them. But I think it's new makeup release radar official. Regardless, again, in the description box, I will link both of those Instagram accounts. Anyways, I went through them today. I've gathered 10 items. Some of these items are already available on the market. Some of them are upcoming. It's a bit of a mixed bag. Let's dive in. So this item is one that I had just seen for the first time today. And my only question is why? Like Makeup Revolution, explain yourself. When Huda Beauty started putting these kind of powders or gels or Petri dish type shadows into her palettes, People freaked the hell out because nobody, absolutely nobody wants this. Why would we want a giant pan of this as a highlighter? It looks off-putting. It looks like a science experiment gone wrong. I have absolutely no interest in it whatsoever, but I thought that I would include it in this video, if only for the lols, because, I mean, prove me wrong if you want to, but like, hands up, does anybody actually want this kind of product? My experience with these products as well, having got palettes that have these kind of shades in there, is that they dry out very, very quickly. And then you're just left with basically a useless product. So certainly I'm not going to be buying a specific pan of this kind of thing, knowing that it's likely to dry up within a few months time anyways. So this was like an immediate hard pass for me and I feel very secure in that decision. So moving on from there, then we have a collection from Pat McGrath and while I am slightly more interested in this than I am the Petri Dish highlighters, it's really not saying a lot. And I'm really not interested in this. So this collection has three different eyeshadow palettes. It has a number of different liquid eyeshadows. There are some lipsticks, two blushes, a, ver a variety of items. But when I looked at this picture, I really had to take a double look to really confirm that there are three palettes because they look so similar to each other. It wasn't until I saw like the close up of the three, I'll stick that one up here, that I could see that there are some differences, but not by much. I, I don't know. Here, I, I've said this before. I just feel like Pat McGrath is very overhyped and I really don't understand why. It's not that I've ever necessarily had like a bad experience with her products, her customer service, and her shipping, on the other hand whole different ballgame. But her products are like good, but I just don't find that they rise above that level. Some of the packaging looks really pretty and there's some shades that I think are really gorgeous, but overall this collection just looks very safe and very humdrum to me and it certainly doesn't bring anything new to the table. So again, this was a very easy no for me. If I was going to grab anything, it might be one of those blushes just to try them out, but I'm not going to when the blushes are, how much are they? $39 US, so that's pushing it close to the $50 Canadian mark. That's just too steep for a blush that I'm just trying based on curiosity. So 
this entire collection is an easy, easy pass for me. Likewise, there is this new face palette from Natasha Denona. So she has released the Love Face Palette. And I, I take exception to this on a number of fronts. So first of all, I just truly hate her cream blush or putty blush, or I don't even know how to describe the texture of these blushes that are in these face palettes. I do have the Glam Face Palette, and I never use that blush because it's just so stiff to work with. It's so hard to pick up and transfer onto the face and then blend out. And it's just, it's just not worth the hassle. It doesn't do anything so transformative on my skin that I'm willing to put in the effort. So right there, that is going to be a whole miss for me. I'm just never going to use the blush. But also like this palette is very redundant in terms of the shades. It's very, very reminiscent to the Retro palette, which I have. It's very reminiscent to the Love palette, which I did have, but I decluttered. I also have the Mini Love palette, which I've also decluttered. And this just very much looks like a curation of those three palettes put into this kind of format. As well, it is $75. I am not paying $75 US, I might add, which pushes it our exchange rate is terrible, close, close to the $90 mark, not quite there, but close to. It's pretty, I will give it that. These are the kind of colors that I like, but I do not need this palette. I will not be buying this palette. Now with those three out of the way, we are moving into the realm of items that I am curious about. As we're going through them, I'll let you know if I think I'm curious enough to actually buy them. But at this point, nothing that I'm going to be talking about today is anything that I have purchased. So up next from Danessa Myricks, we've got the Hyper Radiant Liquid Highlighters. These are going to be available on February 7th on the Sephora website. I've already seen them on the Sephora website. They're just not available to purchase yet. I could be lying about that. I think they were an app exclusive for a day and I hemmed and hawed at least one of the shades was available, the, the champagne colored shade. And I hemmed and hawed about it, but I thought back to my rule of like, don't purchase things the first day that they're available. And I put a pin in it. And now that I've had some time to really like look at them and think about them, I don't need this. I do have, I would say at least three different liquid highlighters. They're not really my go-to. Although having said that, I am wearing one today. This is from Charlotte Tilbury in Pillow Talk. But on a day-to-day -day basis, I just want something easy. And for me, a powder is much easier to deal with than a liquid. So while there are some very pretty shades in there, it's not really anything that I need. So I've already talked myself out of this one. And then moving on from there, Lawless has now released their Forget the Filler Lip Plumping Line Smoothing Tinted Lip Balm. That is a lot of words in that title. I will never remember that name. We're just gonna call them Tinted Lip Balms. So these are very pretty and I've been looking at the swatches of them and I have really been trying to just like sit on my hands so that I don't add one to cart and actually buy one because I do not need these. First of all, I don't need any more lip balms, tinted or otherwise. I do not. I have a million of them. I do not need this product. However, they're very pretty. But what gets me is the lip plumping, line smoothing, blah, blah, blah. If anybody has tried any of the lip plumping stuff from Lawless, please let me know. Do they have that like mentholated feeling? Are they like spicy on the lips? Are they cooling? Like, do they have any sort of sensation? Because in my experience, most lip products that are lip plumping just make me really angry. <laughs> I just don't like that feeling. I can't even tell at this point if I like the feeling of like the lip injections from Too Faced less than I like like the Buxom. They're very different ends of the spectrum. I find the Too Faced ones are like almost like cinnamon oil. Like they're so hot and spicy for a while. But then you have the Buxom ones that are just very cooling on the lips and remain so for so long. And I hate both of those. So without knowing if this tinted lip balm has that like tingly god awful sensation that honestly I think you either love or you hate because I've never really found anybody who's like nah, I can take it or leave it it's one or the other and I am definitely in camp like get that the hell away from me I don't want to take the risk on this so I just keep reminding myself about that whole lip plumping side of it so that I stop getting distracted by how pretty they are and so far it's worked because I haven't bought it yet so there we have it okay Moving back to Danessa Myricks, she has released the Yummy Skin Blurring Palm Powder. Oh my gosh, 
again, with the names, can we get like a moratorium on product names that have like six plus words in them? Because that is an awful lot of work for your girl here and I just can't do it. Okay, let me try reading again. It's a fairly basic skill. Yummy skin blurring balm powder flushed matte color for cheek and lip. Who is coming up with these names and are they paid by the syllable? That's the question for the ages. Anyways, I've seen these again on the Sephora website. I don't believe that they're available just yet. It just says coming soon on the Danessa, sorry, on the Danessa Myricks website and the Sephora website. So there's no date yet. They're very pretty. They're very pretty, especially that one on the bottom right and the one in the, well, that entire bottom row. Let me, let's be honest. I think they are gorgeous. I don't need them. I don't need them. I have so many blushes. I did a huge blush declutter last summer. I finally got it so that there is now like a space for everything and everything in its space. And I don't want to mess that up by adding a bunch of other items, although I am very tempted by that entire bottom row. I could do without the one in the middle, but the one on either end, like the orangey and that like bright pink, I would like for them to come home with me. We'll see. I'm curious about them. I might pick up one. I don't know. We'll see. That's the best I can do. Okay, moving on from there. This is an item that I actually did put into my cart and then moved it over to Love's List and I haven't purchased it yet. Again, jury is still out. I really don't need this product and I have another um, primer that I'm working on as part of my project pan. So regardless, it is this one here from Kosas. This is the Vitamin Infused Skin Illuminating Enhancer. So my understanding from the description of it and from what I've read on the Sephora website is that you can use this as a highlighter. You can use it under foundation for a little bit more additional glow. It sounds very reminiscent to that e.l.f. halo or the Charlotte Tilbury flawless filter, Hollywood, whatever the fuck. See, again, when there's too many names, they all get jumbled in my head and I can't remember them. Regardless, it sounds very similar to those kind of products. I actually managed to pan a Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood flawless filter last year. And while it is very pretty, I don't know that it's necessary for my own personal preferences at any rate. This one comes in, I think on the Canadian website, it's in the $45, $49 range Canadian, somewhere around there. So it is a very hefty price tag for essentially being a primer. And I do have quite a few primers in my collection still with quite a lot of product left in them. So it's really not filling any gaps that I need. And I think it's more just the curiosity for me and the novelty of the item. That's what's really piquing my interest. I, I like that they have a very good shade range, I'll say that. I mean, I know it's not like 40 items, but it's not an actual foundation. It's meant to be worn under, but I like that they have really, really light and really, really dark and then a nice spectrum in between. It's not just like 15 shades of white and then one token dark shade. I like that there's an actual balancing of that. I just don't know that I'm going to shell the money out for it, especially when there's items that I want more. Like this one here from KVD. This is the newest member of the Good Apple collection that they've got going on. This is the Good Apple Serum Foundation. It is a full coverage transfer proof foundation, which I find interesting because it is a serum foundation. And when I think of serum foundations, I usually think a lot more lightweight and light coverage. Claims to be full coverage. The packaging looks really cool. Again, the shade range looks awesome, as well as the undertones. There's quite a variety there. I'm very curious about it, but I tend not to wear full coverage foundation. But everything that's listed in the description of this product does sound very interesting to me. It's a full coverage foundation with a natural finish, transfer proof, extreme long wear with a lightweight serum feel. I like that idea of full coverage with lightweight feel. Don't know if it'll really like work out in reality, but I like the idea of it. It covers everything from blemishes to acne scars, hyperpigmentation, discoloration, and more. Uh, poor blurring natural finish, nourishing apple extract with glycerin, and luxe recyclable glass bottle. There are 40 shades. They will be $42 each. It is vegan and cruelty-free, and it'll be available on February 6th. So I am very intrigued by it but I want to hear other people's thoughts first before I put my money towards it. And now we're getting into the top two. So this next one, I actually did try to put money towards it, but it had already sold out. 
again, throwing back to that idea of me not purchasing things on the first day that they become available, it worked, I guess, for me, but also against me at the same time, depending on your perspective. I wanted to get the corn palette from Hip Dot, but it had already sold out. And then it restocked and it resold out again very quickly. So didn't get my hands on it. I'm honestly not heartbroken about it, but it's more the nostalgia for me because corn also evanescence <sighs> huge alterna head right here love 90s music into early 2000s just it's my shit so both of these really spoke to me from that perspective i know nothing about hip dot i don't know if the quality of these would be good if it'd be crap if it would just be like a collector's item just to look at and not actually apply obviously i don't need another blue eyeshadow palette because i I'm wearing one, so I didn't need the Evanescence one. The corn one, very, very neutral, but very, very pretty. I really love the CD case packaging. Like it just, it just transports me back in time to being like 17, 18, 19, rocking out to all this and just living my best life. So I was very curious about it, but not curious enough to go back. Like I haven't gone back to see if they have restocked yet again. The, the moment has passed and that's what I kind of like about this whole like just relieve the pressure for myself from trying to put into my calendar when things are releasing and have notifications going off and waking up early to make sure that I'm first in line because I've done that and it's just it's not how I want to be living my life it's truly not uh, so I'm much happier this way and then once that like FOMO just sort of relaxes a bit I can move past it so Again, these are like the palettes that if they showed up on my doorstep, I'd be quite happy about it, but I'm not like banging down the door to find them. We'll put it that way. All right, my friends, strap in because now it's time to talk about <laughs> this. Um, YouTube, please don't demonetize because I've shown penis lipstick, please. Uh, but here we are. I am not sure I even know how to pronounce Isamaya. Is that how you pronounce it? Isamaya? I'm not entirely sure, but Isamaya Beauty has released what I have been referring to as cock sticks um, because obvious reasons. So these uh, deliver an intense color payoff with a lustrous, comfortable finish featuring ultra dense liquid pigments suspended in a solid oil. The final effect is satin slick, saturated color in just one stroke. And then it goes on to talk about like the antioxidant, botanical actives and this and that. But like, are people buying this for the ingredients or are you buying it for the packaging? Because I have to think it's for the packaging. And I have to think that she thinks it's going to be for the packaging as well. Because why else would you put a lipstick in a cock and ball set? It's clearly for the packaging. And I'm okay with that. I am not one of those people that's going to be like, oh my God, it's a penis. Like, like I've never seen one in my life. Uh, I think it's hilarious would I pull this out at work while I have a client sitting in a meeting with me? Absolutely not. Would I apply it at home and then wear it out? Fuck yeah, why not? Especially that dark one, the black cock and balls. <laughs> How many times am I going to... Especially that more neutral shade. I think it looks gorgeous. Can we also talk about the the, the modeling pictures though? With like the... Oh, like really, mm, it's all very suggestive. Uh, but again, I'm not like I'm not clutching my pearls that's fine you know who probably is though Jeffree Star he's probably angry as hell that somebody actually releases because you know you know he wishes that he could have but he didn't so here we are so I mean personally I can deal with the packaging I probably hide it for my children and I would never take it out into public but I can deal with the packaging if anything it would be good for a giggle what I cannot accept however is the $95 price tag. If I am going to be paying $95 for a replica penis, it's not going to have a lipstick inside of it. It's going to have a motor. And with that said, I think that we can wrap the video up here. So thank you so much for taking the time to watch. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know down below which items you're interested in, which ones you're not. Otherwise, I will see you in my next video. And until then, just be a decent human being. Bye for now.